Hey everyone, it's Megan and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for interesting new videos every Tuesday and Friday. All right, let's talk diet. Today's video, I'm going to be discussing the reasons that I went gluten-free and vegetarian and the effects that it has had on my mind and my body. Just in essence, some of the important things that happened for me is my skin cleared up, I lost some weight, I started feeling really, really good, I gained a lot of energy, and a bunch of other things. Also, stay tuned for the end of the video because there I'm going to give you some tips and tricks if you want to change up your diet and how to do it successfully without giving up. So before we get started talking about the effects that I saw on my body, I just want to give a little bit of a timeline to give you guys an idea of when I cut out gluten and how I started cutting out meat. So in my senior year of high school, I ate gluten and meat pretty much all the time, honestly in pretty unhealthy doses. One of my favorite places to go was Chick-fil-A and I would get their chicken sandwiches, or maybe I would order a pizza and get it with pepperoni and bacon. And honestly, I just wasn't really happy with my body, the way that I felt. I constantly felt sluggish and I had all of these cravings for foods that honestly weren't very good for me. When I graduated high school, I took a serious look at my diet and the effects it was having on both my body and my mental health. And honestly, at the time, my main goal was just to lose weight. I wasn't really thinking about really being healthier or fixing my mental health problems, like all I wanted was to lose weight and feel confident in my body. So I started to try and eat healthier meals and I started doing some meal prepping so that I wouldn't have to think as much for each of my meals. And this was extremely helpful for me. Now in meal prepping and trying to eat healthier, I accidentally ended up cutting out gluten for like three weeks because all I was doing was eating lean protein and veggies and some fruit and maybe a few snacks. After a while, I ended up having something with gluten. Uh, I specifically remember the day I had had an English muffin for breakfast and I had meal prepped some pasta for lunch. And after I ate the English muffin, I felt a little sluggish and my stomach kind of hurt, but I decided to keep on going with my day. After I ate the pasta, however, I just felt awful. My stomach got extremely bloated and I just felt really unwell and I just didn't want to do anything. All I wanted to do was just lay down and make myself feel better, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. Now, as I do, I started Googling all of my symptoms and I was asking questions like, why am I so bloated? Why does my stomach hurt so bad? Does it have anything to do with all of this pasta that I just ate? Honestly, at first I just assumed it was because I had eaten something unhealthy after going so long with eating like super healthy meals. However, one of the things that came up in my Google search was potentially a gluten intolerance or celiac or something along those lines. That kind of got me thinking, and I decided to try it out a little bit more. So after that day, I stopped eating gluten completely, and every once in a while I would try a little bit of gluten and all of my symptoms would come back. This continued on until I went off to college, and when I got to Duke, I was just eating really healthy food still and was doing a pretty good job at not eating any gluten because every time I ate it, my stomach would get upset. However, my stomach still wasn't perfect and I was constantly looking for ways to improve my diet. So my freshman year at Duke, I started cutting out red meat just to kind of see how it would make me feel. I went down to like eating it maybe two to three times a month, not very frequently, but I still liked a couple of things and I wasn't really ready to cut them out yet, but I drastically reduced the amount of it that I was eating. In sophomore year at Duke, you start eating at a different dining hall, and the new dining hall had a lot of different options, so it was really easy for me to start incorporating things like meatless Mondays or doing one meatless meal a day, and that really helped me with my transition into stopping eating meat. At that point, I had pretty much cut out all of the red meat in my diet and was starting to reduce the amount of white meat and fish I was eating as well. In the second semester of my sophomore year, because I had so many options, I stopped eating meat altogether and transitioned to just being pescatarian. The reason I kept eating fish is because I was concerned about getting enough protein and staying healthy. The summer after my sophomore year, which was last summer, I was living in San Francisco and the vegetarian options there are absolutely insane. So when I was there, I pretty much transitioned to being fully vegetarian, except I still ate fish maybe like once or twice a week, just if I was feeling particularly hungry or if I was craving it at all. When I cooked for myself that summer though, I didn't cook any meat or fish at all. I only cooked eggs and like tofu and things like that as my sources of protein. 
This was also easy for me just because I was having two of my meals a day at Google's office and there they have a lot of really good vegetarian and gluten-free options, so I never really felt like I was missing out on anything. I think this summer was particularly important for me because I learned how to cook tofu and I feel like before you learn how to cook tofu properly, you kind of hate it. And after that moment, I was like, okay, you know, I could go vegetarian. So now I'm gonna talk about some of the physical effects that I saw when I stopped eating meat and gluten. For one, I lost a lot of weight. To be fair, I was making a lot of changes in my life at that time, like meal prepping and moving around some more and focusing on getting more water and stuff. However, I do think that stopping eating gluten and meat has helped me a lot in eating healthier meals. I could make like a whole video just talking about my weight loss and how I worked on that, so let me know in the comments down below or in this poll if you'd be interested in hearing a little bit about how I lost weight and the steps that I took towards a healthier lifestyle. The second big change that I noticed was that my skin cleared up a lot. Before I stopped eating gluten and meat, my skin was always really oily and I was breaking out a lot and just really like insecure about my skin in general because I felt like it didn't look very good. Once I started cutting out all of the gluten and the meats I was eating, my skin cleared up a lot. I think there are a couple of reasons why. For one, I wasn't really eating as much greasy or fried food, which I think helped a lot. Plus, I was getting in a lot more vegetables, which is really good for your skin. The last big change that I noticed was that my stomach started feeling so much better. Before cutting out gluten and meat, my stomach was always in a lot of pain and it was really hard for me to focus on things just because I was always trying to adjust my diet and figure out why my stomach hurt so bad. After though, my stomach started feeling a lot better and it made it a lot easier to go through like day-to-day -day tasks because I wasn't constantly in pain. I was always bloated and having a lot of just general stomach pain, discomfort, and sometimes I would just have to lay down for hours because my stomach hurt so bad. Now, I don't really have those problems as much. My stomach is still sensitive, but it's so much better than it used to be. Of course, I've seen some great effects on my mental health and well-being in general as well. For one, I have a lot more energy now, and I think that it's because I was eating so many carbs and I just felt sluggish constantly. Also, I feel like I like vegetables a lot more than I like meat, and I like protein substitutes like beans and stuff just more than I like meat. So I was just feeling a lot better about myself in general and had a lot more energy that just kind of left me feeling happy and content with my day. Another thing is that I'm so much more confident. I know you might be thinking, come on, that probably happened with the weight loss. But honestly, I don't think so because as soon as I started changing up my diet and feeding myself with healthy whole foods, I started feeling really good about myself as well, even before I had seen any changes in my weight. So I think that eating a healthier diet, specifically without as much meat or gluten, helped me feel a lot more confident in myself. Lastly, an unexpected side effect was that these changes helped me a lot with my anxiety. One of the things that really stresses me out is food safety, so every time I ate meat or fish, I was like caught in this mind cycle of whether or not I would get food poisoning, or I was always really paranoid when I was cooking meat and fish, just making sure I didn't contaminate anything, and it wasn't really a productive way for me to be living my life. I don't have to worry about that with vegetables and stuff really, just because like, it's a lot harder to get food poisoning and stuff from like tofu, for example, than it is like chicken. Of course, that can definitely be seen as like avoidance for anxiety, but I do still have fears when I eat things like eggs. However, I'm working on becoming a lot more comfortable with that. Basically, cutting out meat has helped me a lot, both in reducing my anxiety and teaching me to branch out a little bit with what I'm comfortable with. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about how to be successful with big changes to your diet. For example, stopping eating gluten or not eating any meat. When you hear it like that, it kind of sounds depressing. It's like, why would I stop eating meat? They're like, what would I even eat? And I think that the main focus that you should have is to try and find things that you like that are part of your new diet. So for me, I have created a bunch of like go-to recipes that I use that make me feel excited and happy and like I still have foods that I enjoy. If you're interested in some tasty go-to gluten-free and vegetarian recipes, check out my video from last week, which is all about three tasty meals that you can make during quarantine that are gluten-free and vegetarian. Another thing that I cannot stress enough is to be easy on yourself. I know it's really easy to get mad at yourself or upset with yourself when you don't do great at your new diet. However, 
Beating yourself up and getting mad and quitting isn't actually going to do anything for you. It's just going to make you feel guilty. For example, if you decide that you're not going to eat meat anymore and then you accidentally eat some meat or intentionally eat some meat because you really are craving it, don't beat yourself up and don't quit. Just know that you'll do better next time. Plus, it's honestly okay to mess up once in a while. Nobody's perfect and honestly, the fact that you're trying is already making a huge difference. Another thing that I think is important to know is to take it slow. A lot of people think about going vegetarian or vegan and think that the change can easily happen overnight. For some people, that works, but for a lot of people, it's a lot harder to just completely change your entire diet overnight. Like I was talking about when I cut out gluten, I started slow and every once in a while I would try it out again to see if anything had changed. With going vegetarian, first I cut out red meat, then I cut out white meat, then I cut out fish. It wasn't an immense change to my diet, so even if I had cravings, I could still usually indulge in them without it being a big deal. Taking it slow might feel frustrating because you want to make the change fast, but personally, I think it's more important to make the change long term rather than make the change quickly but then give up in a couple of weeks. The final thing that I want to address is having good go-to orders in places like restaurants. That was something that I didn't really consider when I started going gluten-free and vegetarian, but it's actually kind of hard to find things that fit your diet when you go out to eat. And that left me feeling like I couldn't really go out and socialize with my friends, even if I wanted to. So one thing I try to do is check out the menu before I go anywhere so that I know what to order without being bored. Some important things that you can check out are maybe if they have like a good black bean burger on a gluten-free bun, or if they have gluten-free flatbreads, or maybe just a salad that has some good protein on top. Doing some research before getting a meal with your friends can create a low stress environment for you. Plus you feel like you have things to eat there so you aren't feeling like you don't wanna go out again in the future. That's all I have for the physical and mental effects and I hope my tips were a little bit helpful. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have any questions about how I did this transition or if you'd like to see a future video about how I lost all of my weight. Thank you guys and have a great week. Bye!